Hi, you are on the Film Crop channel. Today I will tell you about the 2020 film based on a real story called The Mauritanian. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Whatever you decide, your honor. May God forgive us and Mauritania, November 2001, two months after the September 11th terrorist attack. Mohamedou Old Salahi came to his relatives directly from Germany. People are very happy about his arrival and compliment him. One man even asks to help his nephew with a visa, who is doing well in science. The ritual celebration continues. People from America come to Mohamedou because they want to see him. Mohamedou's cousin is being sought because he was in Bin Laden's group. Mohamedou says he doesn't know anything, then goes to change clothes and quietly erases all contacts. The mother is very worried that he may not return. Albuquerque, New Mexico. 2005. Nancy Hollander goes to the court session and asks for the case file from Terry Duncan, a young girl who is also a lawyer. On the street she meets a friend, and he tells her that a Moorish lawyer approached her in Paris, he represents a local judge. And he tells the story of Mohamedou, who was taken away on that fateful night, but never returned home, keeping his relatives in the dark for three years. Now it has become known that he is allegedly one of the organizers of the September 11th terrorist attack. The man asks to call and find out everything about the prisoner, but she is denied information. She tells the rest of her colleagues that she wants to represent Mohamedou's interests in court, because it is illegal to imprison a person without trial and investigation. Terry agrees to become Nancy's assistant on a trip to Cuba. Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Couch and two of his good friends are talking about terrorists, participants in the September 11th terrorist attack, because now things are going against them. Stuart's friend was in one of the planes that crashed into the tower. They give him the case of Mohamedou Salahi and say that this man recruited the one who sent the plane to the South Tower, where his friend was. They want Stuart to press charges. Meanwhile, Nancy and Terry have already arrived at Guantanamo, where there are very strict orders. They are being led to Mohamedou. All recordings made in prison are considered secret. Mohamedou turns out to be a very nice person who speaks English, this surprises Nancy and Terry. At the same time, they themselves surprise Mohamedou because he is simply interrogated for 18 hours year after year, he does not even know what he is accused of, and then lawyers appear. Why would I? Nancy asks them to sign a paper that would allow them to defend Salahi's interests in court. He somehow agrees and asks to call his mother, but Nancy tells her not to hurry, because the number is still worth checking. Meanwhile, Stuart Coach is shown all the information about Mohamedou Salahi, whom Coach wants to sentence to death. How cleverly the military took advantage of the loss of Stuart, turning him into an angel of revenge. Nancy says they need to go to Virginia because Mohamedou wrote to them. In addition, she lets Terry know that her critical thinking is fine and Mohamedou may be guilty, but their goal is to save him from illegal detention in prison. In Virginia, they are escorted to a heavily guarded room in the privacy department, in which there are two envelopes with Mohamedou's letters. If the government won't let them know about the case, then they'll find out for themselves. They start reading papers. Salahi remembers August 5, 2002. He is shaved, handcuffed, something is injected and photographed. The next day he is taken for questioning. People treat him kindly and ask about his past, as well as about training with Al-Qaeda. Stewart, meanwhile, meets the wife of his murdered friend in the church and promises that he will avenge him, because he is sure that he is doing justice. But is it so? During prayer, someone starts talking to Mohamedou on the other side of the bars. He has no way to find out who it is, because everything is covered with a dense green canvas. He is from Marseille, and Salahi is from Mauritania, so they decide to call each other Marcel and Moorish. The number of the man from Marseille is 241, and that's all that is known about him. The government refuses to give any information about him, pretending that he does not exist. Nancy goes to the man who gave her this case and asks to find out who this prisoner is. Stewart is told that Nancy Hollander has taken up the case. He is also informed about the constant contradictions in the protocols on the Salahi case, there are no dates on them, but there is a signature of one person, this is an acquaintance of Stewart. The lieutenant colonel goes to him to find out the details of the case. Stewart asks for access to the data on this case, but gets nothing. In the confidential information department, important details from Salahi's letters are covered up with a marker. During Mohamedou's interrogations, it turns out that one of the Al-Qaeda members reported on him from whom they probably also extracted names, and he had to throw everything on someone. The interrogators reveal their cards, they were told that he was guilty of recruiting people to Al-Qaeda, and if he does not prove otherwise, he will face bad consequences. Mohamedou talks to 241 prisoners about what is happening again and accidentally remembers how he won a scholarship to study in Germany back in his school days. 
In 2005, the government approved access to classified information. Nancy received a lot of boxes with files, but almost all of them were hidden with a black marker, cutting off the possibility of finding out anything. But Stuart Coach got the same thing, but without amendments. Technically, none of this is evidence, but Stuart is under pressure and he has to hurry up. Looking for new ways to win in the case, he again comes to his old comrade and asks for access to classified data, but the man again refuses and says that he needs to fly to Guantanamo himself and ask the general to provide access to information. Nancy and Terry once again fly to Mohamedou and retell everything that his mother told them. At the same time, Terry accidentally lets slip about the privacy department, which reads his letters and determines the level of secrecy. This makes Mohamedou terribly angry, because he believed that this was just between him and Nancy. But the woman convinces him to calm down and sue the government. At Guantanamo, Nancy meets Stuart, who invites her to have a beer, and then a difficult conversation begins. Stuart is very confident in his victory and even tries to shame Nancy for defending this monster. In response, she says that the man is too confident that he will win, but what if they just lie to him? On the plane, Nancy says that we need to change the logic of protection and find someone else besides Mohamedou. Stuart goes to see the conditions in which the prisoners are kept and is very surprised. The temperature in the cells is 11 degrees. He asks the general why they are doing this, but does not get a clear answer. Meanwhile, Mohamedou is learning English and trying to find at least some humanity in the guard, but in vain. Marcel is upset by the letter from his wife, because it's just a letter and he can't see her. Mohamedou writes about how he met his first love in Germany. When he saw on TV what was happening in the world, he resolutely went to defend his country. Fighting on the side that America was on, including. But the whole problem is that he trained from 90 to 92 in Al-Qaeda. The investigation asks him why, then, did he delete all contacts from his phone when he was arrested? Mohamedou just didn't want any problems for his friends. The investigation doesn't believe it. This begins to upset Mohamedou, but he does not lose heart and reminds Marcel that they will definitely get out of there and get to their home. Nancy is being interviewed, why is she defending a terrorist? Nancy explains that she is for justice. One of Stewart's people requested information, for which he was subsequently fired. Nancy is informed that they cannot find this man from Marseille, with whom Mohamedou was. Salahi asks the guard about his friend from Marseille and learns that he has been dead for a month. The guard says the man strangled himself. Mohamedou, during a walk, sees the sea through a hole in the canvas, it reminds him of the native sea of Marseille, about which he told. This news leads a man to trembling feelings, and he prays for all the living and the dead. Nancy and Terry are being chased by people with American flags, they shout at them outside the courthouse to remember the horrors of September 11th. The judge agrees with Nancy and they receive unclassified information about the case of Mohamedou Salahi. Terry is shocked by the contents, because in the papers Mohamedou confesses to everything he was accused of. Terry sacrificed so much for this case, which turned out to be a failure, but Nancy does not intend to listen to her complaints and says that if she wants to leave, let her leave, and Nancy will continue to work on the case. You can't win a case you don't believe in, and Terry leaves in tears. Mohamedou, meanwhile, recalls how the people who interrogated him handed over the case to the military and warned them that they would not stand on ceremony. The military came into the room and put a bag on his head. Nancy comes to Salahi and says that Terry has abandoned the case and mentions Salahi's confession. Mohamedou says that he was forced to do it by force. Then Nancy explains to him that this is exactly what letters need to be written for, otherwise how will she find out the truth? All this angers Mohamedou, because he has completely lost faith in what will come out of here. Nancy finally says that if he does not write letters, he will find him another lawyer. Stuart meets his friend Neil and accuses him of hiding information along with the others, but does not get a sensible answer. Mohamedou remembers it was Neil who tortured him and forced him to confess to the murder, he writes all this in a letter. Mohamedou was then transferred to another cell, where there is neither a Quran nor a normal temperature. Nancy receives a new letter from Mohamedou. Neil comes to Stuart's office at night and tells him about what was happening in those days, and also shows him secret memos. Right that night, Stuart and Nancy will find out the truth about what happened at Guantanamo. He was tortured by lack of sleep, loud music, forced infusion of water to cause panic, beatings, sexual humiliation, ridiculing his infertility. The threat of arrest of his mother, forced Mohamedou to reveal all these bullying. He was going crazy right in the cell where he was tortured. Stuart can't believe what was happening, and Nancy can't hold back tears when reading the letters. They tortured him for several months, constantly beating him and doing whatever they wanted with him. When he couldn't think at all and couldn't even speak, 
They said they had detained his mother and she would be put in jail with him. Then Mohamedou decided to confess to what he had not done, and he was forced to confess to other things, making him a scapegoat. Stewart, realizing the complexity of the situation, goes to church. Then explaining himself to the person who entrusted him with this case, refusing to pursue charges. Stewart is called a traitor. Nancy arrives to support Mohamedou and asks him to publish all the letters as a book. Stewart packed up his things and left the place where he worked. Everyone calls him a traitor, they write about him in the newspapers. He goes to Nancy, discussing this matter, they decide to be on the same side. Stewart asks her to look in the box number 32, which contained the polygraph results, and they were twice positive. Nancy made a copy of them for Terry, who finally found 241 prisoners and his family. Nancy gets Terry back to work. In 2009, a meeting begins, where Salahi connects from prison via video link and makes a touching speech about racism, about eight years of difficult imprisonment. In 2010, he received a letter to Guantanamo saying that he had won the case and was joyfully going home. A voiceover is heard, despite the fact that Salahi won the case, he stayed in prison for another seven years. He never saw his mother, she died in 2013. Nancy and Terry helped him fight until his release. After long legal proceedings, in 2015 Salahi published his book, which became a bestseller. He was released on October 17, 2016, after spending 14 years and two months in prison for nothing, he was never charged. He returned to Mauritania and married Kitty's lawyer. Their son Ahmed was born, but they cannot see their mother from America regularly because they have problems with visas. Nancy Hollander is still fighting injustice in this world, one of her clients is still being held in Guantanamo. Stuart Couch works for the Department of Justice as an immigration judge. Terry Duncan continues to work as a lawyer in cases where the death penalty is imposed. None of the services apologized for what happened to the Guantanamo prisoners. Out of 779 prisoners, only five were brought to justice, and the appeal verdict decided to release three prisoners. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel and like this video, so the channel will grow.